guys, it's Misty from Studio 23. Um, I'm here today to talk about the classes that I'm going to be having available here um, in the spring and summer. So while I do that, I'm gonna do a little bit of mixed media with you today. Um, I'm gonna do some collage and basically I'm just gonna be using acrylic paints, some water, I have some regular gel semi-gloss. Um, you could use Mod Podge too, which I prefer to use. And I'm gonna use an old magazine. Uh, this one is a uh, largely printed um, mass media magazine. So it's not really worth anything. There's tons of copies out there. You could probably buy it on eBay for like $3 if you wanted it too. And I also have a stencil I'm gonna use. Uh, usually I prefer to make my own, but today we're gonna go with store-bought and that's okay. So coming up, I have a mixed media workshop. Um, it's going to be Saturday um, on 522. Um, it's going to go from 10 to 1 p.m. And it's $55 for members and $70 for non-members. And we're going to be working on um, some mixed media with portraits. So I have a couple here that are unfinished that I'll show you guys some examples. You've probably seen them on the website before uh, or on the Facebook or Instagram. Oh, I got a little smudge of black on there, but we can fix it. Um, this one is made with stencils, paper, um, acrylic paint, watercolor. We work on some hand coloring techniques as well as collaging and uh, stenciling, making your own stencils. I have this one as well, which is really fun. This is a picture of my grandmother. I really love this one. She's gonna be done soon. I need to add some other elements in there. I'm gonna teach you how to use a different kind of mediums too. We have texture um, mediums that we can do to make a raised surface, which is really fun. Uh, we can work with using things that we have around the house. We don't have to worry about buying uh, new things, but whether we can find things around that we can use to make something cool. Um, I have some scrapbooking things that I use, but we could also uh, make separate elements with paper and cut them out and put them on, which is usually what I prefer to do, but this was something I wanted to get done in a short amount of time. Um, in this class, all of the um, materials are provided for you. Uh, you just have to give me the picture that you want to use. It might be a self-portrait. It might be a child or grandmother or whoever it is that you want to do. Um, you're going to send us your black and white photo or your photo, and I will print it out for you, and I'll have all the supplies for you for that class. This is a fun class because you don't have to go as much as I do. I tend to be really bright. Um, I tend to overdo things. You can do a much subtler effect, some hand coloring, you know, a very subtle um, background, things like that. You don't have to be as, uh, be as outspoken as I am with color. Um, it's really fun. I love this class. Again, it's uh, $55 for members, $70 for non-members, and all your supplies are included for this class. It means paper, paint, um, stencils, you know, texture mediums, uh, any kind of paperwork I give out. Sometimes I like to give out uh, things to tell you what you uh, can use or bring or, um, or to do it again on your own. So um, if you would like to register for that class, you can call the studio or register for it online at studio23baycity.org. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to start, I have a mixed media paper. Uh, let me see if I have the brand. I don't have the piece around here, but it's just a basic mixed media paper. I think it's strapped more, nothing fancy. Uh, it works pretty good for what I'm doing. A lot of times I like to tape this paper down because they tend to curl sometimes. You'll see 
Uh, these were not taped down. They start to curl at the edges, but you can fix that with a little bit of a heat press or an iron over it. Put a cloth down, iron over it, should be good. Um, so I'm starting with my mixed media paper and I want to choose a color. So I think the image that I'm gonna go with is this one right on the cover. I really love this. So I wanna go with something that would look good with this picture. So something that probably exudes love, something fun. Um, let's see, maybe I'll do, yeah, let's do this color instead. Let's do a neon blue. Oh, no, I have turquoise. Sorry, I changed my mind. I like the turquoise. So I'm gonna go with the turquoise. And first what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna find a brush where I put it. Oh, right next to me. And for this technique, I'm gonna have my clean water and this little dish over here in the wee dish. And I have my bucket of water to clean my brushes out. Just because I don't want to mix those two up, I have a habit of doing that, so I want to make sure that when I go to accidentally put my brush in this little cup, I'm going to be say, oh, nope, that's little, I got to put it in the big one to clean it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paint. I'm going to dip my brush in a little bit of water to help this move around. And I'm going to paint my background. Now, I don't care about brush strokes. If you do, you can take your time, do them however you like. If you like something even, if you like to go all the way to the edge, you don't have to go all the way to the edge. You want to have your paint nice and even for this technique because if it starts to get too clumpy, and your paper is not going to lay down smooth. You want something nice and even. All the thicker paint can go on top. And the timing of this is very important because if your paint dries too soon, the effect won't work. You have to work quickly. You want that paint to remain dry. I'll show you what we're gonna do. This is a surface technique, really simple. It takes a second to do. It's going to take longer to dry, but I'll do something else in the meantime. So I'm wetting up the surface, making sure that it is wet. I'm gonna take my clean brush and I'm going to dab water across the surface. Now what that's gonna do is when it dries, that other paint will still be wet and you can wipe it away and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So I'm gonna move this up out of the way and hopefully you can see that here I've done a similar technique stand forward you can see that the water is going to lift away the paint you'll be left with these fun little specks here so while we wait for that to while we wait for that to dry um i've kind of prepared this little piece here and uh, this one's an experiment we'll see how this goes this is an image transfer technique um, this is something we're going to talk about in my mixed media class, which is a six week course. It starts uh, the week of June 14th and it goes for six weeks um, on Mondays, 5 to 8 p.m. And we're going to talk about a lot of different things in that class. Um, we're going to be talking about um, different mediums you can use. Um, different surface treatments, um, different, uh, you know, bases that we're going to be using, like wood. Um, we'll talk about making skins. This one's unfinished, but this is kind of a 
example of a skin. We'll talk about decoupaging and using found objects and surfaces, um, about making our stencils, um, photo transfer, which I love to do. Uh, here's an example of the photo transfer. Um, also, um, using, you know, journaling and using that to create other pieces um, by using uh, digital technology. Um, you know, we, you can just use your smartphone if you don't have a computer, um, and we can use free apps for that. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take a sponge, a clean sponge and clean water. And clean water. I'm going to squeeze it out a little bit. And hopefully this works. I haven't tested this paper before um, in this magazine, so we'll see how it goes. If it doesn't work, that's okay. You guys will see me uh, testing out something new. Now, some papers do different things. Uh, some are too thick to do this with, or uh, some will darken. And what we're doing is we're hopefully transferring that image onto our gel base, and it looks like it's working so far. The trick is, is using enough pressure to take away the paper on the back uh, without taking the image off the paper. So, or taking the image off the medium, excuse me. Sometimes you can rub too hard. We don't wanna rub too hard. We wanna rub just enough. shaking the camera too much. I'm sorry if I am. I'm just removing that paper. Another thing we're going to talk about is, um, you know, the legalities of images that we use. It's really important. And sometimes things that we don't think about when we're creating our mixed media designs or our art in general. So something like, uh, generally I wouldn't use out of a magazine, I like to use my own photography, just because it keeps it uh, in the safe legal territory for me to use it. This is an older magazine, I'm not gonna sell this. So this should be okay. A lot of times we don't think about, you know, using song papers that are copyrighted or um, a book, even the, the sheets from a book we use. Sometimes people can get upset the way they're used and they can take legal action for that. So mixed media can be a little tricky when you think about the materials that you're using. A lot of people like to use old photos that their family has around the house. Um, you know, things that you've taken textures, those are great things to use. Um, I like to use old carpet remnants. Um, actually, that's what I used in this. So sometimes there's carpet samples that um, carpet places will give away and you can use the fabric in those to uh, create other things. Um, carpet samples, uh, really good ones are uh, curtain samples too, uh, even like wood floor samples, you can use those to paint on. I like to emphasize in my class that you don't have to have expensive materials to create art. You know, especially in these times, we like to find things to make them. We can find ways to make them uh, archival quality by sealing them and using different sealing techniques. So as you see, I'm revealing her face very slowly. You can do it by using your fingertip too. That is actually quicker, but your fingers start to get a little numb there. 
Um, I also love to use wood panels to do image transfers onto. Uh, that's a sturdier material to do that. You can use old clothes to transfer images onto. I'm gonna tear that little piece off right there. Now this tends to be very messy, this technique. We usually use this when you're using, you know, magazine covers or magazine pages. You can use book pages to transfer words. The only problem with transferring words and magazine pages um, is that you're gonna transfer the word backward. So, a way to remedy that is to There, but we can paint that back in possibly uh, to scan in the image that you want to use and to flip it in your photo editor or whatever the application is that you're using. I think you need to do it right in the preview thing. You want to flip it so that the image is reversed. Now, so you guys can see it this way. So that when you go to apply the image, you could print it, apply the image to your, whatever you're working on, and then it'll be reversed. And then you still have that sheet to use for another time. So again, that class is gonna be six weeks on Mondays from 5 to 8 p.m. That's going to be starting June 14th. And we can kind of work with what everybody's skill level is. You don't have to be a master painter to take this course. Um, it's great for beginners because you can kind of experiment with different things and we can work on technique. We'll also talk about how important journaling is. Everybody's going to get their own journal. Now this class, I will bring some supplies in, not everything. Um, you guys will have to bring the basics, you know, pencil, paper, paint, um, whatever you're going to paint on, uh, you are responsible for. I will try to give you a heads up to what we're going to do next week, each class just so you know kind of what to bring. We'll do some experiments. You don't have to do them if you don't want to. You can do it as your own lab time if you just want a place to work on your mixed media um, and just kind of watch me do um, some of the things that we're gonna be doing. But you'll get to do things like uh, transferring images. Maybe we'll make our own jelly plates um, we'll talk about decoupaging and just collage, uh, making your own stencils and making your own stamps. Um, you can do that with things that you find around the house. We'll talk about some printmaking techniques. Talk about all the mediums and the different ways we can use them. And if anybody has any questions, you can leave them down below and I'll try to get to them after I am done here. Sorry, I can't answer them. I didn't have my computer set up so that I could answer them while I was going. So you can still see that there's some brown left. I want to be very careful because if you keep rubbing around the thin edges, you might tear away some of the stuff you don't want to tear away. Sometimes you can let it set up again, uh, let it dry out, and then go back in and try to remove some more of that paper. Again, you don't want to push too hard because you don't want to take all that off. You don't want to take off her face or the black. 
If you if your black your gray start to become white, then you're pushing too hard. So that's starting to come through. I really like that. my sponge in the trash by accident. I'm just going to clean off the area of any excess and not pushing too hard. If you sit, if you sealed your uh, area um, with paint, it should be okay to very lightly wipe away wipe away any of that excess. So there is that image transfer, which turned out, I think, pretty nice. Um, I'm gonna go in and maybe do some other things. Not sure yet, I might like it just as is. Once she dries, I'm gonna seal her or see if I need to remove any excess off of her. This is another one of those images that I got from the photography magazine, which was actually really wonderful. I'm going to set her aside now, let her dry up, and then I'm going to fold this baby up. Now this feels like it's pretty dry. You want to make sure that it doesn't get too dry because then you'll lose some of your areas. Like you can kind of already see that they dried a little bit too much. But when I take a cloth, and I wipe this away, we get those fun speckles. Unfortunately, I waited uh, just a little bit too long. It is really hot in here today. Um, so you want to make sure that if it's warm out, that you're checking this quite a bit just to make sure that it's not getting too dry. Like I said, timing's everything with this. We didn't wait too long, so that's okay. So it's good. We still have some areas to work with. Another thing we'll talk about using is um, things that we find around the house, maybe old brushes. Um, I would like to do with an assignment on maybe uh, creating our own artist palettes that represent our style. Um, this one I'm still working on, but I thought I would show you guys the fun technique that's on it today. Really like that. So what I'm going to do now, oops, clean some of this off. And I'm going to take my golden, which I really love this iridescent bright gold um, from Golden. I love these colors together. And I'm just going to paint over. That blue. Just like before. So this class, like I talked about before, um, this you will be responsible for some of your um, supplies. I will provide things for you to play with, uh, to try, 
and then you can decide if you would like to bring them on your own. Um, I'm going to provide a journal for you um, to try some things and experiment with different things. So you can keep notes, keep track of what techniques do what, um, you know, adding paint to, you know, say a crackle uh, finish or something like that. I also like to use journals because sometimes I have excess paint and I like to um, use them to create other things. I'll show you that in just a second. So I'm taking my clean water again, splashing it across the surface. It is warm in here today, so this should be pretty dry very quickly. I think it's already getting there. This is one of those techniques that you really got to hustle for. So, as I talked about, we're going to use some digital techniques. And you don't have to have fancy software. There's plenty of free photo editing software on the internet, or on the smartphones, internet, iPad, um, all sorts of things you can use to create stuff. So this image, um, I used an image that I had been creating uh, with some collage techniques and stenciling. And I wasn't too sure about it. I wasn't really happy with it. So I photographed it. You could also scan it. Um, put it into a software and I played with it a little bit, messed with um, the filters and uh, the color and the saturation. And then I printed it on a mulberry paper and then I went back through and I stenciled on it again and drew on it again and painted on it again. And I got an outcome that I really enjoy. Um, I just really, sometimes you get an image that you're not happy with when you play around and even things that you work with, like these paper projects. That doesn't have to be the end of it. If you feel like you've gone as far as you can here, take it someplace else and you can play around with it. Some people think digital art is cheating. I do not. I was uh, taught by a lot of teachers that use um, design programs to do their art. Digital art is, val is a valid art form, um, at least to me. Some other people don't think so. And that's a, that's a good debate to have on another day. So I have my gold in, I think it still has just a minute because I can still press in my fingerprint there. Some great things that you can use are uh, newspapers, um, like this old photography um, magazine, which was fantastic. It has lots of great pictures in it. Um, just fun to see the old vintage photographs in here. You can get a lot of good uh, actors and actresses. If you don't like destroying books, you could always look for uh, free bins, telephone books, um, damaged books. I know sometimes people feel bad about damaging books, but you know, if they've got stains and things, why not? give them a new life and give them something else because otherwise you're just going to end up in a landfill. I'm going to push this forward and let that dry a little bit more. And I'm going to start cutting out. I'm going to go with the front page of this. Just to show you what 
this um, this is doing this this is starting to darken up again or lighten up again because of it's very warm here and it's drying you're gonna see that these are the places that I need to go through and sponge off some of that excess um, paper that's still on there so this might take a little bit it's not a quick process um, you should actually when you go to do this let your gel medium and your paper dry for 24 hours to 72 hours to let that that um, medium to cure properly in an appropriate place uh, different temperatures you know do different things if there's a lot of moisture um, it could affect the drying time as well as the opacity of the uh, medium that you're using so sometimes if you use I don't know if anybody's ever used a clear spray paint on a rainy day and gotten a white residue on their painting and they're not very happy well that's because the moisture was too high Sometimes uh, some of the brands tend to do that and react with different papers and paints also, so you have to be very careful. Um, but I'm going to cut out this couple right here. They're really adorable. I like the feeling that they've got going on between them. So you could use scissors, you could use an X-Acto knife, whatever you have. If you want a very precise cut, I would go with an X-Acto knife. And you could tape it down to make sure that you're getting everything that you want to get off there and that it's secure. I'm doing it this way today. Sometimes people like the, uh, white outline of the paper. And you don't want to go too fast because if you do, you might screw something up and some of these things, you know, you cannot replace. So I would also recommend if you keep a journal or any kind of testing materials, I would take a piece of this cover and test whatever you're going to do out on that first because you do not know what this paper is going to do. Sometimes old dictionaries or old papers will soak up the mediums that you use and turn different colors. They'll get too dark. Um, they may even mush up or break away you want to make sure that what you're using is going to stand up to what you're doing that way you're not wasting a beautiful image like this and another suggestion which i already kind of suggested before cut it right off is to scan the image too if you really like this image um, scan it first so that you have it, uh, save it to, you know, Dropbox or whatever kind of, you know, iCloud or whatever saving thing you use. I like to keep textures and things like that in a folder so that I can use on another day. So if this one, you know, doesn't turn out, you have an extra later on. And you could use photo paper or whatever kind of paper that you can to print it out. Now it's important to mention that I have a um, pretty good printer. Um, it is a inkjet printer. It's an Epson R2000. Um, that printer I'm able to, I've tested and I'm able to do um, photo transfers with it. Usually they recommend that you use a laser printer um, to do photo transfer. Uh, mine does not bleed. Um, some other printer inks might. So I would test your printers before in going into any of these endeavors because you're gonna just waste uh, lots of product if you don't.
also, like I said, mine is archival quality. So what that means is that when I print an image, that image will likely not fade over time. Um, it's resistant to light being shined onto it. You know, it's resistant to the elements. Um, it's also pretty water resistant, which is nice. So I've got this cute little thing going on here. I'm going to set that to the side. I'm going to check on my gold. And yep, my gold is doing pretty good. I'm going to take a clean side of the cloth. It's always important to use a clean rag and not your paint rag that you've been using all day because once you do that, you're going to ruin your picture. I mean, it might add a cool effect, you never know, but I would not recommend it. It's always best to do the things that you want to do in a very controlled way. Happy accidents are great, but if we can control the accidents, even better. So now you kind of see that we've created this lovely splash in the back here. I love this. Usually I would let this dry again, but for time reasons, I'm not going to. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna do a simple one today. So we're not gonna get all complicated. You guys are gonna start getting bored soon. Um, I'm gonna try placing my image, see what I like. Kind of like that, that's kind of cute. And then I'm going to take this and I'm kind of trying to convey, you know, maybe there's a spark igniting between these two. Do I want it up here? Do I want it to go down here? Sometimes bullseye is not always best. So when you're, you're, you're designing things, you want to do it in a way that's, you know, not always the norm. A lot of people choose bullseye. You could always, you know, go to the left to make it interesting. It doesn't always have to be horizontal. I could do it this way. Then it might make this a little bit more interesting. There's plenty of different ways to set things up to make it interesting. It doesn't always have to be center. Today I might do center though, because that's, that's the easiest for me today. I think that's where we're gonna go. So. to make sure this baby stays in place. You can find a friend. I'm going to use painter's tape. Ah, it's stuck in my hair. Make sure your hair is tied back. I did not. You don't want to get tape in your hair or I think I actually had a ball of um, <laughs> that paper that I was rubbing off earlier. I'm sticking my tape on my shirt just because you always want to make sure that there's not a whole lot of stickiness on there. You don't want to take away your paint. You want to make sure your paint is absolutely dry before you do this. I'm going to lightly put that painter's tape on there because we don't want this to rip off anything important. Again, if it rips it off, you know, it might work out. You never know. Happy accidents. We want to try to prevent the accidents. So today I didn't bring my good stencil brush, but uh, you can always use something um, that has a stiff bristle and is pretty even on the top. Usually um, stencil, uh, stencil brushes are bristly like this but are very even across the top so when you press, you're pressing 
down. You're not, you know, getting all those extra hairs in places. So, I'm going to choose, let's see, I think I'm going to choose the orange. I'm not sure what this orange is going to do. We'll see. It's a neon orange by Artist Loft. It's a nice little pack there. The paints are decent. I like them. So I'm going to dab off my brush onto my paper just so I don't have hunks of it. I'm going to hold this down and I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to go straight up and down and I'm poking. You do not want to brush from side to side because you don't want that paint to go underneath your stencil. Now I'm not using the right brush today so it might bleed, probably, likely. Do as I say, not as I do. We'll use this as a learning experience. If it does bleed, then I'll say I told you so. With enough care, it can be done though. Use what you have. Um, it's important when using these stencils too, um, to check to make sure that all the circles and things like that are cut out. Sometimes you get these and they're not fully weeded out. And what that means is that these little centers have not been plucked out. Great thing you can do is you can create your own stencils. And I'll talk about that in my class. You'll learn about basic weeding and things like that. And you could even take another color into the stencil. if you so choose. Now I got these stencils off Amazon. Super easy to use. Uh, this one kind of smells like hamster wood chips, which is really strange, but uh, the smell goes away after a little bit. After I use my stencils, I do clean them immediately. I don't want any of this paint to build up on here. I like my stencils nice and clean because if you let the paint build up on them, they're not going to lay flat and you're going to get bleeding and you don't want that to happen. So if you're going to use stencils, make sure that you're cleaning them up with soap and water or just water, warm water afterwards. I'm not you pushing too hard and causing some bleeding. We're gonna work with it. It is what it is. I'm gonna take a little pink. Maybe I'll go in the center here. And work it around and out. In the center and out. I'm going to take this color, this purple. I'm going to have a nice magenta too. So, I'm going to peel this off. Put this to the side and hopefully ooh, not make a mess. So that's what it looks like with that. And to let that 
dry. Just a few minutes. I'm going to put it to the side. I'm going to take my sponge, and you see how these areas here still have some paper attached to them. I'm going to go back over. So again, I have a workshop available coming up Saturday um, on 522. Uh, that is the portrait workshop and we'll be working on portraits like this. We're going to do some mixed media portraits. They're not going to, you, yours are all going to look different. They don't have to look like mine. We're going to be playing with different textures. Um, this is a, a molding paste. We can work with bead gels, crackle paste. Um, we're going to have, I have some lace. You can use all sorts of different materials, um, different ways to collage in the background and stencil, um, hand coloring with pencils, using watercolor, using acrylic paint. You can use your own designs. You can use stickers. It's whatever your heart's desire. We're going to be working with a few different things. And that class is going to be $55 for members, $70 for non-members, and that runs from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And again, that's on 522. And then my six-week course, which um, I think is going to be really fun because we're going to play with lots of different materials. Um, you're only going to need the basic materials, and then I'll provide you with some other things to play with. Um, that one is Mondays, um, 5 to 8 p.m., and that is starting June 14th. You can... You know, sit back, relax, we'll listen to some soft music. You can bring wine if you'd like. You might do some still life. Still life decoupaging. We'll be working on journaling, photo transfer, uh, possibly making our own jelly plates which is fun. Um, we're working with uh, image transfer, um, photo manipulation. Now we'll work on some basic mixed media techniques. Maybe one day we'll go out and take some photographs but down by the river and create some photo transfers for them or something. She's coming along nicely. I might let her dry one more time before I put a thin coat of gel medium on her to help her stiffen up a little bit and to keep that image. That's okay. I'm going to take my people and I'm going to find a clean brush. It's very important to always have a clean brush when you're using, you know, your your clear gels and things like that. You don't want any tint because whatever tint is in the brush that's going to get on your paper, and you do not want that. Again, you can use Mod Podge for this. And I have to work quickly in here today because it is so dry and so warm that these things dry very quickly. 
So you wanna try to work as quickly as you can. You could also use, um, you know, paste if you have it, um, rubber cement. It's whatever you have to use, whatever glue. Again, I would test beforehand to see what these things do to these specific papers because they all do something different. You wanna make sure you get the whole surface because you don't want anything coming up. Going back. And I'm gonna make sure my fingers are absolutely clean before I go over this. Because you want this stuff to stick and you don't want to get anything on your beautiful picture. You can also, I'm not going to use it because it's so little wet. You see some edges are coming up because they're drying very quickly. That's okay, we can go with a thinner brush later on. Get those on there. So I might go back in later once this is dry and add more elements to it. Right now, I think I'll leave it to dry. Let me get this side of your dress right here. I want to be very careful not to add too much because it's going to blurb up the side of it, and you don't want to do that. Let me turn him around just a second. Most of the edge is covered. I'm going to go over it once I finish it with another coat of protect, protective surface, for, ugh, protective medium to go over it. But this is just a fun little quick thing to show you guys that we can do. Um, again, I have a workshop running on 522 from 10 to 1 p.m. Uh, the cost is going to be uh, $55 for members, $70 for non-members, and I have a mixed media class that's Monday nights. That goes from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, it's a six-week course. Um, I will provide some materials, but the rest basics um, you will have to uh, bring yourself, but we can work with all sorts of different found materials. Uh, it's going to be a really fun time. That one starts June 14th. Uh, it's $115 for members. 150, 140 for non-members, and that's actually a really good value for what we're going to be doing. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact me or you can message the studio. You can also call us at 894-2323 uh, or um, you can email us or go to the studio website at studio23baycity.org. Um, I hope you all have a great weekend. And thank you for joining me.